you, sir. I'll go ahead and call our special call meeting of July 16th to order at this time. Let's have a word of prayer. <laughs> Father, as always, we come to you with uh, desirous heart, Father, to be obedient to you. We ask for your guidance. We ask, Father, that you would help us make the right decisions that would benefit our fruit uh, citizens. And we pray, Father, that through it all that we honor you and pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we have several visitors with us. We already have them on our agenda, so uh, we'll take a look. We don't have any minutes of our last meeting, not to the regular meeting. Do uh, you want to bring up anything before we, or you want to wait till later? Probably wait and discuss it as Okay. No bank statements or anything like that. You will notice what we're doing is uh, putting our current status on a uh, piece of paper just for your benefit. Uh, we're going to old business at this time. Uh, I will recognize David Wakefield. Uh, you've asked uh, for him to come and make a presentation. Uh, he represents Veolia, who manages uh, uh, right now the closest one to us is the city of Hardensburg. Manages all of their um, daily operations, their water, their sewer, their streets, their parks, whatever. They do all the management for that city. And so David, uh, if you want to come and talk to us about managing our water plant. And all right. First, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to you. Um, Mayor Ken came and visited me in Hardensburg uh, several weeks back, and um, I would have had a better presentation plan, but uh, I've been out um, in the Virgin Islands working at some VLA projects for the last two weeks. Mayor Chen called um, my uh, administrative assistant uh, last week and asked me if I could be here tonight. So I have provided you with this information that tells you a lot about VLA. We are a worldwide global um, environmental company. We're over 150 years old. We're the oldest environmental company in the world. Um, we operate not only in Europe and Southeast Asia, um, all over uh, Europe, United States, South America, North America. Um, so we are a global company. With that being said, um, we operate facilities, small facilities, the size of uh, Hardensburg. Uh, as Mary Chen just alluded to, we operate a reverse osmosis water plant there. Um, we helped, helped uh, Hardensburg build that facility back in 2007. They were struggling with <coughs> regulatory issues. They were on uh, Rough River uh, as a surface water source prior to that. Uh, had a lot of issues. So uh, we made the decision to totally move the water treatment plant clear to the other side of uh, the county on the Ohio River and totally reverse the flow of the system. And now they feed, uh, they supply most of uh, Breckenridge County, uh, fifth largest county in Kentucky. And they basically supply uh, about over 19,000 of the 21,000 residents of Breckenridge County. That includes like wholesale water to the city of Irvington and the city of Cloverport. We also do all the distribution there. Uh, we do the wastewater plant collection system, and we do the public works as well. We don't do that at all of our facilities. Um, basically, we're, we just do whatever the client's needs are. Lots of places we just do wastewater. Some place we do wastewater water. Um, some place we do wastewater collection. Some place we do water and distribution. Um, so, I guess my point is that not only are we serving big cities, um, like we do, we supply, we do all the water treatment for Tampa Bay water. Um, we do Milwaukee Sewer District, to name some big ones. Oklahoma City, um, Atlanta, Fulton County. We do water, wastewater in Atlanta. But we also do cities the size of Hardinsburg and Hartford, Kentucky. Um, and medium-sized cities. So we, we cover the gamut. It's based on the customer's needs. 
And I can tell you right now, I am not a professional marketing salesman. I'm not here to sell you anything. Uh, I am a 30-year veteran of Veolia as of July 26th of this year, and I manage water and wastewater facilities. I'm the district manager for Kentucky and Tennessee. But as you can tell from my earlier comments about being in South Croix, uh, if it's in the South, I end up going there. And, uh, it sound like you roughed it for the last couple, three weeks. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's not like people would think, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Um, Hurricane Burl was forming as soon as I got there. Uh, it downgraded to a tropical storm, but I could show you pictures right outside of my hotel where the palm trees were leaning over <laughs> and the winds were blowing and the rain was just pelting my, uh, my hotel room. And it, it uh, crashed the SCADA system at, the, at our plant due to power interruptions. I'm sure Mr. Mayor Chen has, has, has educated to our, I'm gonna say the word plight, that we have here in Hartford, we have a uh, we have a water pl uh, treatment plant that is on Rough River. We don't have the luxury of relocating it to right uh, Ohio River. Sure, uh, we don't have the luxury of relocating it to Green River because I'm not sure we'd be gaining a lot from Green River. We, plus, we don't have any contiguous boundaries with Green River. Uh, so, that being said, that's one issue we have. We have right. a plant that we currently own that um, I'm sure could be run and operated more efficiently than what we're able to do it. But if you're in the business to make a turn profit, I'm sure. Uh, yes. I don't think you are a, 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 a non-profit non organization. No. <laughs> uh, but if you can, uh, you know, what would be entertaining from my standpoint is if you can t help us to figure out a way that both our water plant and even our wastewater treatment, uh, you know, you might be more uh, better suited to negotiate with our uh, regional wastewater plant than what we are uh, to make it work. I mean, you know, I personally would love to see if there's any type of formal, you know, after you learn a little bit more about who we are, is there some type of formal proposal that you can give us that at the end of the day, our water treatment and our wastewater treatment and our residents, who are our number one concern, sure, or can live with the rates that would be charged for us to be able to. Uh, operate operate right. efficiently and you to make a profit. Right. That's that's our concern. I mean, right. I don't know how else to put it. Well, you put it very well, um, and that's exactly what we do. Um, we we generally try to. I mean, we have a set of best practices. Uh, we have sets of initiatives that are deployed all of our Viola projects. Now, by the way, it's in California, Hardinsburg. Everything is done the same way. We use the same management system, asset management, operational management systems uh, that are all deployed by Veolia. Um, there's total accountability. You don't just send your DMRs or your MORs to Frankfurt. Um, you upload your water quality reports. Every anything, any data we collect gets uploaded to project manager. The, the uh, area manager like me, it gets uploaded to the Veolia technical people, and there are baselines built in to every treatment facility, and if it's out of range, our technical people, I mean, you, you've got to answer all the way up the line. So, um, basically, it optimizes and streamlines the efficiency of your treatment facilities. and. So yes, we can, if, if you ask us to, we can come in, we can do what we call our due diligence. Uh, we do an evaluation of your facilities. Uh, we want to evaluate some of your financials. We want to know what you pay your employees, what you're out for uh, medical insurance, what you're out for retirement. Because if you ask us to come in under operation and maintenance of your facilities, they will be the only employees. We have nothing to do with you setting your rates. We don't want to own your system. We just want to professionally manage your system in the most efficient way possible. And we generally can find uh, margin and savings. So we like to think that we can operate in an efficient manner to where we can find a lot of savings. We have 
we have Ville has national agreements all the way from Office Depot to uh, Hawk equipment, if you're familiar with water treatment equipment, uh, Rosemont, I mean just anything you can name, Viola has national agreements with these companies. We buy Hawk equipment, he's, I'm sure he's very familiar with Hawk. Uh, we, nobody buys Hawk equipment, it's a German company, but that you'll see it throughout water and wastewater plants. It's the best equipment probably on the market for water and wastewater facilities. Nobody buys that equipment cheaper than the owner. We get because we buy it worldwide. So you do you you not only operate you would do a management contract to operate the water plant and distribution or just the water plant? Whatever your needs are. We would, how we would, familiar are you with our rates? water? Huh? The city the city okay. Only what the mayors in our one meeting have discussed. So you do know what type of system that we have? I do. And the water that we're working with, with that type of system? I do. I'm very familiar with the Corps of Engineer. I'm very familiar with uh, Rough River. Um, so we dealt with that. And yes, you say you don't have options. There's always options. Well, they may be different options. Let's but rephrase it. We don't have options. We, we don't have a lot of op options right. to relocate. Right. But my point being is this: I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, you're going to have to turn a profit, and we're going to have That's to have correct. a we're going to have to rate that, we're going to have to charge a rate that our consumers, which being our residents of this town, That's can correct. afford to pay. My my question would be is, based upon any information that we can give you in the review of what our operations are currently, you're telling us in the next 30 or 45 days you can come back with a proposal that either we can or we can't do it and we can review it and make a decision from that is that correct well it may not be 30 to 45 days but we would try to expedite it as quickly it's not an overnight process right uh, I have to I have to bring expertise in from different parts of the country to help me do that uh, and as I explained it to Mayor Chin we basically we look at how many employees you have now once we do our due diligence, we decide how many employees we think we need to operate the facility. It may be more, it may be less. We don't know until we get in there and have a look at things. So we will build a budget from the ground up, starting with five employees, 20 employees, whatever it is. We build in medical insurance, we build in a retirement 401k. You know, we just start building a budget based on what it would take us to totally operate that facility or facilities. And then once we build that budget, we come up with a proposal and then we submit it to you. Yes, and then we can either do one of two things. You can either accept it, reject it, or we can negotiate. Go, back to, the, go back to the paper. Right. Just have what have, you know, historically, uh, and you know, I'm sure there's some historical data out there, when you've entertained these type of relationships with other communities of our size, and you know, you're, this is your business. This is right. what you do. Right. I mean, if nobody, what I'm hearing is, if, if, if it can be done, y'all are able to doing it. What have you seen traditionally of what a municipality like us has to do to rates? You've seen them stay, stay stable, go down, increase historically? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, rates very seldom go down. Well, <laughs> even, even if you get in a situation where you're spending less, yeah. You find more planning you need to do for the future that's going to eat up that money regardless. That rates very seldom go down. I mean, that's just the honest truth. Once you get to a certain point, you, uh, very seldom have I seen rates go down. Now, you know, your cost of doing business, our cost of doing business is going to go up. It goes up every year. You, you know, there's just no denying that. Now, so. It, it, to answer your question, there's no one answer, okay? It depends on, I have no idea what your rates are. I don't know if you have cost-based rates. I'm sure you've heard that term before. You know, you gotta have cost-based rates. Whatever cost you have of operating your system, that's what your rates need to be. Whether your cost is a um, million dollars a year or it's $10 million a year. Your rate has got to It's a proprietary account that we do not need to be losing money in. I'm sorry? It's a proprietary account that we do not need to be losing money in. That's correct. Uh, you you shouldn't be losing money and to borrow money. Uh, excuse me. Uh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, going back to what you said earlier, you talked about more of a, you would be more of an operations management type company, but then you said something about buying certain type of equipment. Would you maintain and the operations and the equipment at the same time? No, what I, my point is that 
when we operate facilities, we bring other things to the table to help you save costs, like purchasing. And what about down the road if we decide we want to divorce you? <laughs> <laughs> well, is there a contract? You know, for uh, it's I'll tell you a ten-year uh, agreement, or once you're here, we're pretty much stuck with you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. As your attorney can tell you, every contract is made to be broken. Um, Generally, a termination clause in some way. <laughs> but I, I can say that there's not a single contract that I've managed to date where they've wanted us gone. We've been in Hardensburg since 1995. A lot of uh, communities, if you've ever been to Hardensburg, a lot of it's county seat. A lot of the commu uh, communities uh, the size of Hardensburg are struggling. Hardensburg's thriving. So, and we'd like to say that we have something to do with that. So, um, you know, you guys, some of you guys are probably familiar with. Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Everybody goes to Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg. Those are the only facilities, but we've had those facilities since the 80s. You know, I mean, the, I'm in healthcare, and you know, at one point in time, the physical court tried to manage the hospital. And what they learned real quick was the physical court didn't know anything about operating a healthcare facility. And you know, some communities might be able to manage their water and their treatment plants efficiently, and others may not. That's correct. But we're, we're at the point now, and I think all of us are being honest at the point, that we're, we're looking how can we better manage our plant to deliver quality products at a reasonable price. Now, that may be an oxymoron in the di today's climate. I don't know. But we have to look at it. Right. We have to come up with something that right. we can come back and evaluate. And, uh, um, and, and that, that's our goal. And like I said, I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not saying that we fit in every community. But there's a lot of communities we fit very well, and and uh, we'd like to think that we're part of the prosperity of some of those communities. Do you also, if let's say, that, but let's, it doesn't happen overnight. I understand. Let's let's use Hardensburg as an example. Uh, Hardensburg is producing water through reverse osmosis process, now, right? And they're producing water, and now you're selling. You're saying, this, do you all actually work and try to help negotiate contracts with other? municipalities or other uh, districts to where you can sell water? I've negotiated all their contracts. Okay, do you also do the same thing with regional wastewater and, and, and trying to help on that also? Well, we certainly would. If that's what you wanted us to do, we would certainly, if that was part of our scope of work, yes, absolutely. Okay. But ownership of the plant, ownership of the lines, everything still retains with us. That's right. The rates stay with you. The decision on the rates stay with you. We only try to hold your hand, give you advice, and operate your systems as efficiently as possible and as economically as possible to try to lead you towards the future. The sustainability is the key. You know, Long-term sustainability. That's what you're striving for. How many plants are you operating in the state of Kentucky? Uh, I've got a page 16. It's, uh, there's several. Like eight, maybe. So, if you look at page 16, it shows you uh, water plants, wastewater plants, and energy 11. facilities that we operate. Oh, just water plants. And... So there's a couple. Of so you only have seven. two waste. You only have two wastewater in Kentucky. Well, there's only two green dots on there. Yeah. That's what I see. Well, I think there's some industrial wastewater facilities. We operate Flint Inc. Been there for years in Elizabethtown. If you're familiar with that, um, Odom County Sewer District. We manage it. You're not in Flint, Michigan, are you? Carriage House. No. <laughs> <laughs> Carriage House. They used to be in Odom County. You know. <laughs> Seventeen. We're very safety conscious. I mean, it's just it's huge with Veolia. It is safety. It's a, it's a huge part of who we are. Um, go to okay, North America, page 19. We treat 1.7 billion gallons a day of wastewater. 733.7 MGD capacity managed water treatment. Then the biosolids, 
and over 9,066 miles of underground asset management. We have some of the best asset management people in the business. You gotta, you gotta manage your assets. You know, they cost a lot of money. You know, for a new 300,000 gallon, 250,000 gallon water, elevated water tower, it's over a million dollars now. If you had to put one up recently, you know, we put it one up five years ago in Hardensburg, it was 550,000. We put one up last year, it was 1.1 million. Wow. You know, you gotta manage your assets. You gotta take care of it, you know. Yeah, you're probably paying on these water plants for uh, RD loans, uh, SRF loans. All your SRF loans are 20 years. Your RD loans are 40 years. Sustainability. The gentleman, I never did finally uh, answer totally his uh, question about the contracts. You can pick any term, time frame that you want. It's, if it's a five-year contract, it's difficult for us to bring in quality talent from somewhere where he knows he's got a full retirement at some municipality uh, on a five-year guarantee of work. But we do it. We prefer to have 10, 20-year contracts. But there's always outs after so many years. Um, Just curious, you mentioned how long that line as they become your employees. And we have some employees here that we would like to consider valuable employees that has some tenure with us that we would like to make sure they don't lose some. Is that, is that negotiable in, in taking these employees over? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We try to retain. Uh, well, I'm not only worried about retention, I'm also worried about them losing tenure as far as what they Oh, doing. oh, I see what you're saying. Well, I mean, they're going to come off of your retirement system. Right. And um, that would be something that would have to be looked at. Okay. Who do you consider some of your biggest competition? Oh, we got um, <coughs> Severn and Trent. They're not called Severn and Trent anymore. They were they were purchased by uh, um, oh they were I can't even remember the name now. But they used to be Severn and Trent S and T. They go by um, United Water. It's another one. Um, there are some smaller ones out there. Um, Suez uh, is another one. ESG is another one. They operate mostly in the south, in the Georgia and Florida area. Um, what percentage of municipalities has an independent water management, water asset company that manages? It's very low. It's very low on the municipal side. It's high on the industrial side. Because the industrials know they've got to make a profit. Right. They know they have to manage efficiently. But on the municipal side, I'd say only 10% of the market in the United States. And you can see the dots on here. Yeah. Yeah. But more and more bigger cities. Um, as a matter of fact, we just uh, acquired the uh, city of Phoenix, Seattle. Uh, Palo Alto, California. Uh, they're just, they're all understanding that they're at the point that they need professional management for sustainability for the future. Now in Europe, it's total opposite. Very little operated by independent. Yes. They're all professionally managed by a company like Veolia in Europe. I'd say it's probably totally flipped the percentages. So what, after our discussion we have here among ourselves, if we uh, come back and say, you know what, we would like to entertain a proposal from you for either water treatment or wastewater or both, I said 30 to 45 days, you think that might be aggressive? Is it reasonable to say 60 to 90 days you could have a proposal? Um, I would say 90 days would be about as quick as you could do it. Mm -hmm. And that would be probably pushing it due to due the, the uh, due to the workload that we have now and uh, professional people I would have to bring in. Um, but we would do it, we would expedite it as quick as we possibly We definitely could. could have something by the end of the year. Absolutely. Yeah. What would, what would be the cost of bringing in all those professional people? To There's no cost to you. Okay. I just ask that because it is so much work, 
and it, it does cost Veoli a lot of money to do these proposals and these evaluations. I would just ask that you're very serious about doing it before you ask us to come in. You know, that's, that's the only thing I ask of you. Because if you don't think it's something that you're going to want to do, I, you know, I, I'd rather you not waste our time or yours. Right. Because we don't charge you. And uh, we do a very detailed evaluation of your facilities, your, your systems, and your financials. Because if we evaluate your system, we see it's going to cost us way more to operate than what you're doing now, and we're, we're going to tell you that. You know, it may be the same, it may be less. I have no idea. I don't know what you pay your employees. I don't know if you have too many employees or not enough employees. Uh, there's no way to know that until we can come in, do the due diligence, and build a budget based on the scope of work that you've asked us to look at. And we'd be very happy to do that for you. What do you do? You, uh, what about violations with the state? Do you uh, make all those go away, or <laughs> well, <laughs> can you disappear then? Or, or do you have a track record saying that you know what we have? I, you know, I mean, nobody walks on water other, right. other than one individual, and in, right. not here currently, but uh, uh, well, physical form, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm assuming you have a low, I'm hoping you have a low. We have a very low. I mean, we are very efficient. Uh, we have great environmental compliance record. So that would be our number one goal. I don't know what your violations are. You know, I know you will tell us uh, if there are violations. We will run all the reports from the federal database, state database to see what the violations are. And that will be our number one priority is to bring you back into compliance. When we took over Hardensburg, Hardensburg was in violation, you probably heard of the TTHMs, trihalomethanes. Yeah, we've heard from that gentleman more than once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even before they brought in the uh, HAA rule, the halicidic acids, uh, they used to send those little cards out every quarter saying we're in violation and the water may be causing cancer and has carcinogens in it. And uh, that was our number one goal. We got them in compliance at the Old Rough River plant before we ever moved to the new facility. Now our numbers are almost non-detect for trihalomethanes. And our maximum retention site over 40 miles away from the plant. So that's very important to us. We don't like that. We don't want that on our record. But generally, when we take over facilities, they have those issues. Was your plant paid for when you moved it? It was not. If you don't see the plant, seven million dollar plant, eleven years old, was that built last week? Well, reverse osmosis wouldn't work with us. Oh, I know reverse osmosis won't work with us. We're very proud of that facility. And yes, it, it still looks brand new, but that's the way we take care of our facilities. I mean, you're very aware that, that Rough River is a very high turbidity river. On oh, I'm very aware. You know, yes. it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's a they challenge were on Rough River in that's Hardensburg, right? That's right. Before they moved to Ohio, they know. Hardensburg, when, they, when Rough River would go to low pool, to, uh, winter pool, they were pumping out of a five foot mud hole. <laughs> Pretty much. First rain, <laughs> first rain they get, it would silt, that intake would silt in, their turbidities would go through the roof. The only thing you could do was shut it down. We put a diver in the water to blow out a hole so we could pump water into the plant. And we never once let the system run dry to the customers. And it took us well, until 2007 to get the new plant built and, and get over all the hurdles. But we didn't just look at moving the plant. We looked at every other option. There were other options. We just, chose, we just thought for the long term, we thought this was the best option. You don't have any questions for David? I 
have that. Well, David, we appreciate you coming. Okay. Making your presentation and we'll discuss it. And All right. You got my card? If you got any yeah. further questions, please don't hesitate to email me or call me. Uh, please look at this, review this. Uh, we only talked about a couple of pages of that, so uh, review it. I'll tell you a lot about it. And uh, thank you for uh, your attention and thank you for letting me come tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, thank you very you much. much. Nice to meet you. Okay. Our uh, next item of business is the consideration of the empty council seat. Um, do we have anybody wishing to apply for the empty council seat? I recognize Jerry back here. So Jerry, you want to come make a, let the council members get the chance to meet you and know you and tell us a little about yourself and your uh, reasoning behind wanting to be on the council. And, well, I'm not uh, <coughs> real bright. That might be one of the reasons. <laughs> That's the main reason. We <laughs> just lost five votes. <laughs> but I was born in Hartford, and I live in Hartford now. Not very far from the uh, cemetery there, Oakwood Cemetery. I was born half a, a block away from here over at the used to be the Baptist building and I've lived here twice we first got married we rented an apartment lived here two years we built the house out at Beta and we lived out there 35 years and then in 85 we started our business in Hartford like in the printing company and we had it in our house and garage at uh, Beta. And we just relocated here, bought that lot from the city of Hartford. So they, it was a parking lot and it got a lot of holes and needed re block topping and some more work done to it. And they was probably in the same boat you're in now. They didn't have any money to do that, so they put the paper for sale. And so we bought that, built the building on it, and been there ever since. So I've had problems with the water in my business before because of uh, had offset presses and they use ink and water. And at one time, we'd start out, we'd mix up a fountain solution. You put a, some stuff in it, fountain solution that the uh, mixture and it with the water, and it makes the water wetter if that's possible. But that's what it, they claim it is. It was a surfactant, yeah. yeah. So uh, we would mix up a fresh batch of fountain solution in the morning, and by using Hartford water, by 10 o'clock, it smelled like dead fish in there. <laughs> and uh, so I had problems with water on that, so I had to go out and buy distilled water to use in that, which we didn't use a large volume of water, so that wasn't too bad. And it's 13 years ago I moved to Hartford, but we had lived out in the country, had 30 acres. And if I was at home, I was on a lawnmower or tractor. If you was doing mowing or something, and somebody said, Well, I wouldn't mow that much. If you're out there and you got 30 acres, you got to mow it or do something, or you got trees growing in about three or four years. So I told Sherry we need to pick up our stuff and move to Hartford. So that's what we did. And uh, we've enjoyed living in Hartford. And uh, we do a lot of walking in Hartford. And we even did when we were out in the country, we'd come to town to walk in Hartford because of the traffic on those country roads. You have suicide out trying to walk on them. So. Uh, I've seen about all of Hartford, and I drove a bus route in Hartford several years, and I know uh, a lot of conditions of the houses that people live in and that kind of thing. And so I think I could work and help get some of the problems that I see 
maybe they're not problems to everybody, but uh, a lot of things that I think could be done a little better. So I thought I would like to see if we could do that. And I live close to George, and and uh, that might be a drawback. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, some houses that's within sight of both of us that are needing some care. Mm -hmm. And so I was on the, the Economic Development Council for, I don't know, four or five months. And uh, so I thought this opportunity, I might like to do a little more. Right. Anybody have any questions? I'll try to answer if you have a question about it. We'll tell you that Mr. Likens, being on the EDC committee and being a business owner in City Hartford has been invaluable as far as his insight, as far as what he could help us and give us some ideas of what we can do. It's been a breath of fresh air. I'm pretty close to the same age as George. Watch it too. <laughs> Even though I don't have hair, I'm still not, not <laughs> that old. You fit right in, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anybody have any questions of him? Do we have other people that was interested in this? Is there anybody else interested in applying for the city council seat? I see no they one They laughed else. about that. <laughs> I see no one else raising their hand. Except those hiding back there. I make a motion. All right. To fill the vacated position with Mr. Jerry Likens. All right. Second the motion. Any discussion revolving this? Seeing now, we'll proceed to vote. If you're in favor of asking Jerry to occupy the empty council seat, signify by the uplifted hand. Thank you. Motion's unanimous. You have our condolences. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who can swear him in? Lisa. Lisa can. Lisa can. Okay. Who are you? She swore no. the rest of us in. <laughs> oh, we're in trouble. I'm going to All right. While well, he's doing that, she's going to administer those of office to you. I wouldn't know what this. Huh? That he might need to recuse himself when I get to that. Yeah. 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 I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth to be faithfully and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky so long as I remain a citizen thereof and that I will faithfully execute to the best of my ability the office for said according to law and I do further swear that since the adoption of the present constitution I being a citizen of this state have not fought a duel with deadly weapons within this state nor out of it nor have I sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons nor have I acted a second in carrying a challenge, nor aided or assisted any person thus offending. So help me God. I did. Congratulations, Sorry, Well, I was in uh, National Guard for six, uh, six years. So you just lied. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't fight it. You were. But your seat right there. So, welcome to the council. Well, thank you. I will have to bring up, since he is now on the council, we've got to look at the uh, uh, EDC. Because I think currently it states that we're allowed to have two council yeah. members, so that will have to be addressed. Yeah, either either, that either adjust that or, or uh, accordingly. Somebody have to resign. We'll have to appoint somebody else. Or Amend our amendment. All right, the uh, next item of business that we have before us in our old business is water rates. Um, is this the only set that we've got? They won't understand that. <laughs> I do. It's not that hard to understand. Okay. You want coffee to me? Yeah. 
Are you saying we're stupid? That's, that's exactly what he said. I thought we had this. <laughs> I thought we had this ordinance. We don't have that. No. Uh, huh? No. <laughs> we need Me. it. We need it. Back it. We need Please it. Huh? Okay. Still got back for everybody. <laughs> we got back a couple hours ago. Oh, okay. So you want to? Good for you. You don't think she drove, did you? I thought she flew. I knew we drove 1,700 miles. Oh my Where'd goodness, you go? David. Ithaca, New York. Left Thursday night. That's a dead back to council member two hours ago. I drove do all that all way. Her mother didn't even recognize her. Did oh. No, to um, is she her sister? The Keys yeah. and up to uh, Vermont. Wow. We spent wow. Friday afternoon all day Saturday. Okay. She's a kid. I want to go again. My grandparents. We stopped last Please. night. Spend the night. Anybody? Just married. Didn't recognize her. Please. I went to Pittsburgh and uh, bought a press, loaded it, and hauled it back in less than 24 hours. That makes a long day, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's about 23 hours. You get a little punchy in the last four or five hours, don't you? Yeah, well, the, I had my oldest son with me, and we took turns driving, and we only stopped and sat down to eat one time. Thank you so Other much. times we stopped when we were getting gas, we'd just go in and buy some Thank you, snacks and keep going. So getting huh? gas, peeing, and that's about the only thing you stop for, huh? That's right. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> What's that? Close that shit. Oh, she has changed. She looks a lot of it. You know, this. Very well, may not be anything we can do, but we would be. I know she's changed a lot since the last time she was in the office. Well, Hardenberg was in terrible shape whenever they came in. And they took over everything. Took over the water, took me, over the uh, wastewater, took over the streets, she took over just just everything mm -hmm. except police. And she called fire. me Papa. They didn't take really that at all. Papa. didn't make nice thing at all. He said, you know, it's rough first, but he said people love it. No, I think she's, so wait a second, she's, they're, they're, she's man, they're doing to, city management, not just water management. They do everything. 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 Water management is just one aspect of what they do. There's a, there's a page in here listing what all they do. They, they'll do whatever a city requires, whatever they need. For us, you know, maybe just water, maybe water and sewer, maybe. They're just trying to just look at all the halls and stuff. And then they've got different. You ought to see their farmers market. It is humongous. And it has everything. Every fresh My biggest concern is just what's going to cost us for, for them to come in and do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we their left, job we is to make it be profitable for their moms and but, for them. But they're an unfeeling yeah. company. They don't, people they don't. They don't. That they, they, they don't have any fish crepes there. Mm. They're, they're, they're going to do what, what's bad. That was a terrible flowers. thing to say. Flowers there. Well, <laughs> if I, if I <laughs> went to you, awesome. you think if I went to Martin once, I would have any feelings for the folks in Orangeburg because I'm not from there? If I went to Paintsville, I'm there, we'd probably do what it takes. I don't know anybody in the community. Well, for lack of better terms, a corporation. A corporation. You know, I mean, they're going to water. They're worried about the bottom line, and I understand that. But I mean, I do too. Uh, I, I, I think that they're all mixed in. Did you need a copy? Hardensburg is now doing well, and they were not before. That they would not explain. They would There's so much community we just haven't even seen, isn't it? The water was level with way down. Yeah. You want me to kind of break it down for them a little yeah. bit? Okay. Is everybody getting a copy of it? She probably loves it. She loves it. She, last night she said, I really missed it. Let's go. Let's go. You're good husband, David. You're making an awful lot of noise over there. I'm done. Hey, it's like that all day long. Is it wrong? Okay. So, at the last meeting, you all tasked George and I to come up with an assessment of your water rates and a proposal based upon what we have. And I happen to have an old worksheet and um, countdown from the 2012 rate assessment for usage in gallons in the city. So what I did is I plugged that into an Excel spreadsheet about your old rates and what they are currently. 
and you, with your current customers on each rate scale. And that's where you're going to see that roughly we have a little over 12,000 customers. And the gallons that we charge right now under current rates shows you, you the 1874 for you the mean first. 1,200 customers. 12, I'm sorry, yeah, it's 12,000 uh, per year. Per year. Yeah. Those are the annual numbers. Um, your current rates at the 1874 per 2,000 and then each graduated increase as you go up in your numbers, okay? So if you look at the, at the, uh, at the uh, column next to that, your current revenue, that is a rough estimate of gross revenue, what you're bringing in right now, your current rates on each bill. So total for your water, your current revenue, right there, roughly about 457,000, 458,000, okay? Based upon the new rates, at the, and you'll see how, what those do to the bills behind you. This is just inside city water limits. But at the new rates, you're looking at approximately adding another $200,000 to your gross revenue at those new rates. Now what I also did though, is I calculated sewer into this. And George and I, we took into consideration the concerns that everyone's having about that very confusing sewer inside versus sewer surcharge line on the water bills. And so what we did is what we backed our way into it as to what that would be as a flat rate per gallon. And that would let you get rid of those two confusing lines on your water bill and one line that just says sewer. And they're going to be able to look out from sewer and see exactly what that charge would be. So when you back that out, what we came, and we came up with a sewer surcharge based on 1,000 gallons of $5, or, I'm sorry, a new sewer base rate of $30 per bill. Graduated up at $11.50 for each gallon over that. And that's based upon your water usage. So no more of the 90%, no more of the inside rate versus your sewer surcharge come from wastewater. It's all built in right to that one single rate. Okay? Um, not very difficult to understand the revenue over in the last column, what that does. I know that doesn't exactly get you where you want to be, but you'll understand why I felt like, and when George and I discussed, he and I both agreed, we couldn't get you up to that break-even point because of what it's going to do to your bills. So if you flip the page, that very first part up there, that talks about your current rate, and then the inside projected rate, and then the outside city projected rate, and current rate, okay? So we took a minimum bill, which is just basically your $2,000, your little old lady bill, we'll call it. Gallons. Yes, I'm sorry, 2,000 gallons, <laughs> your little old lady bill. $2,000. Um, <laughs> a medium user, someone who's got a little bit larger household that uses things on average, and then a very large user more of your uh, business type users in town and um, I think uh, correct me if I'm wrong you took was it George's bill or my bill and looked at them y'all yeah. got to be the guinea pigs so it's, mine is the medium, medium user I'm you're the saying. medium user George is the minimum user my bill would go basically from 154 a month to 188 dollars a month that's correct and uh, you know I have I have a pool uh, I have uh, an apartment on my property I have uh, a son who believes taking a shower is anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour long uh, when he decides to take a shower. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, so that's what it, how it would affect me. I mean, and a minimum bill is a difference of less than $5. I have a couple of questions. Question number one is why, and I want to know, does other municipalities do this? Why do we discount our water rates so much on large volume? Because we don't really have that much industry in this community. Well, at one time you did, and you also had wholesale rates. You know, my point being is, is that I mean, it gets to the point to where we know it costs X amount of money to make to make uh, a thousand gallons of water. Why do we shoot ourselves in the foot by discounting some of this stuff, large volume, so much? Because when you're looking at it. That's a pretty significant discount. If you go to the larger user, their bill is going to go up a little less, a little less than seven hundred dollars a month. Is the larger user in probably the nursing home and the hospital and schools? Yeah, and probably. I don't know how much is River Bend probably. And does for uh, Standard Brass use that much water? No. So the hospital, the nursing home, and the schools, and Riverbend. Yeah. Okay. Probably there's not that much 
extra revenue generated from big users. It's the residential source coming. Yeah, you know, our biggest. And I will say that what we did when we calculated this is Georgia's initial numbers he was taking on from the county water rates. And that's why you'll see that tier where we had the 8, 10, 30, 50, 100. It actually, we combined the 8 and 10,000 gallons to match what the county rates are. And then so George took those county rates and he also incorporated the 2% annual increase so that you're not going to have multiple increases back to back. How many increases have we foregone and not done in the last 10 years? Every year we got 2%. Per huh? No. Every. There was one or two years that we didn't, right? Ago. But, but once one of the but if we enact these new so there have been maybe in the last five years we've had one or two that we didn't take and if we do this we do not have to take the two percent again in October Is that this correct? builds that into it because about so we don't year. need to do another two percent right. increase in October well for, from a legal standpoint we are doing the right you're doing it in here because we're, we're, do, we're, we're doing it early, early. well Depends Unless on what we don't pass start and, until and how, but the thing is, if you were to do it back to back, by the time you got it all published and, and, and did of that nature, then you're going to be right here timeline anyway. Okay. So. Has anybody briefed Jerry about what we? <laughs> Jerry's uh, familiar with water rates in Hartford at some point. But <laughs> <laughs> well, just to let I, you know, I pay we, two of them every month. <laughs> we, um, the city of Hartford pays, and you guys can correct me if I mess yeah. up, but the city of Hartford pays about twenty thousand dollars a month uh, because we don't charge enough to the customers for water because we realize that wastewater is costing quite a bit and people look at those water bills and they already think they're high but it's not the water it's the wastewater we're losing money on water so we need to raise the rate for water so that that account is not in the hole every month and that's why we're looking at this and all these options i mean it's still going to be in the hole it's not going to be as big a hole we can't we can't raise rates enough at this stage of the game to we only have three proprietary accounts water sewer and trash and we can't raise rates enough right now without driving people off the edge and i will note that if you look at that deficit on that first page after everything is projected that's total out of your water and sewer accounts both and the expenses that we use came straight from leases last year actual number budget which in that particular matter We've already made significant improvements through the improve, through the new project that should decrease probably on, on we're hoping close to thirty thousand dollars some automatic from some of those improvements. And then you also have to understand that with your two percent increase from each year, you're probably gonna realize another thirteen to sixteen percent uh, or thirteen to sixteen thousand in revenue increases just on that two percent. You know, she mentioned sewer. You know, there's been two phases of sewer rehab that we've done. And the amount of money that was spent on sewer rehab has given us some return back. But we're, we did had an analysis done by our by an independent engineer that, that we brought in to look at various options, and we're probably at the point now where if we spend any more money on rehabbing sewer significantly, the return is not going to be there. We could pour more literally pour more money down a bad hole and not get a good return back off of it. So you know when we say that. Uh, can our product be more, run more efficiently? Well, we've got a company that just met with that can tell us that, yeah, they'll probably can run more efficiently, but they're, they're a for-profit enterprise, so they're gonna have to make money off of it. Uh, but we're at the stage of the game now where we gotta do something. We cannot continue losing a quarter million dollars a year on our water plant, and that's what we're doing. Yeah. And sewer rates are horrible already. Uh, so uh, this helps band-aid a little bit of that problem but I think that we're still going to have to look at other avenues and see what other options are. We just can't continue. We can't continue bleeding as bad as we're doing right now. I think we've committed to looking at all options as a council. No stone unturned. Mm -hmm. um, but based upon these rates and what George and after George and I had a discussion and went through all the charts and how they would affect, that was the ordinance that resulted that used both these new inside outside projected rates. And I will say the outside projected rates, our outside rates have always been a little higher than the inside rates. Um, we try to keep those proportionate increases similar in the same range. You know, we can have the first reading on this 
and we can take it home and review it, and that would give us time to see if we need to, you know, there's nothing etched in stone on it other than having the first reading. Is that fair? You can make revisions. If we have the first reading now and wait till the next regular council meeting, which is 26, it will, these rates won't go into effect until the next month. No, they won't go into effect right away. In other words, people will still get one more monthly bill of the old rates. For if we had a meeting, first reading today, and had another second reading later on this week or something like that, then these rates could go into effect for the next billing cycle. So I just tell you that for information purposes. Also, we also remember that we are billing a month behind in our records. Well, what of information is worked when George and I was on the council back on the 80s, 90s, whenever it was, Ohio County did three months in arrears, so you could actually have a bill six months old. But Hawaii County would only, Hartford would only bill every three months for water. Goodness. Yeah. That's and, was, yeah. and then it was only about 15 or $20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't mind that then. Go ahead, send me a bill every three months. Yeah, but you were making about $100 a week, too. <laughs> to answer your question regarding the 2% increase, that is built into the new ordinance, and that's to begin to continue on as an annual 2% increase beginning October 2019. Mm -hmm. So right. this would build that in. Great. In 85, when I built the building down there, my water bill was uh, $7 a month. And Can now we go back to 85? Now, <laughs> we just got two How bathrooms <laughs> and no showers or nothing else. And it, it runs about 70 some dollars a month now. And I make the girls go outside and they didn't use the bathroom as much as possible. <laughs> but it shows, this shows about a $183,000 increase in revenue, which is not going to cover the $240,000 we're losing every year. But I'm hoping that with the, the better conditions at our water plant that we will start to notice you know, a little savings there that, uh, you know, we're talking about running two shifts from and moving the water a lot slower and that would give us less chemicals that we'd have to use and we're not going to change anything as far as personnel, but, you know, just one person started up and one person pick up, you know, and, it slows down the process. That's what they've recommended to us for years. Is to <clears throat> I'd like for us to run it 24 hours a day, but we can't afford that. So when I just did the numbers, it's going to raise my water bill four and eight dollars a year. Do I like it? No, but we can't continue losing money. Um. You just, I mean, are we going to discuss this whole shift thing for the water plant and the personnel, or what are we going to do with that info? Well, that would be just their managing of the system because whenever this tank goes empty here, they're going to have to run as long as they can to keep the small storage tank full mm -hmm. because the big one's going to be totally empty. And you're going to have to run it like that to keep the small tank full. Right, but um, but how many people are we going to have to have run our water plant to do that? Well, right now we've got five and a half. So we've got um, the two of them have to have operators. Yeah, well, we which got, is we got exactly four, we got four and a half. Excuse me, we got four and a half. Right, which is exactly what I'm getting at. So, are, do we need to discuss that, or what is the um, current situation there? Is that going to change with the new two shifts? No, it'll still be the same number of people. The same that we have now. Yes, yes. It's like Leon will come in at, at four o'clock in the morning, start to plan it up, and then he'll run it till say noon when somebody else picks it up and, or there's little overlap and they'll run it 
Okay, so we're going to need to go in closed session to discuss that then, I would assume. Okay. Um, I don't know if we want to finish up anything else. Well, I mean, first, that's something else that's really, <coughs> it's not on the agenda tonight for us. Well, is, are we discussing water rates, and is that related to the water rates? Because if it is, then it's on the agenda. No, well, it's not really, but the water rate would be just this, this bill right here. So that the water rates have nothing to do with your or decision to run no, the plant. No. Okay. We can we can go into closed session and discuss it. We just can't make any decisions about it. Okay. All right. Is there any more discussion or any anything regarding the water rate uh, ordinance that you? I feel reluctantly we have no option but to at least have the first reading on. Okay. Then would you City of Hartford Ordinance Number 2018-05, an ordinance of the City of Hartford, Kentucky, setting water and sewer rates for all water and sewer customers inside and outside the Hartford city limits. All right. First reading on that. Okay. Uh, now we go into new business. Um, the first thing that we have is we have a bill from bigger staff board they have done some surveying back in uh, April I guess anyway but maybe before that we have a, a bill from the EDC is uh, has recommended that we pay that from their minutes on June the 5th they recommended that the council pay Fourteen hundred twenty-five dollars of surveying. Um, How about the EDC account? Okay. So we have that recommendation before the council right now. If uh, what's the council's position on paying this bill? The EDC recommended it. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Do I have a motion to pay? Uh, a motion. Okay, motion to pay. Is there a second? Is there questions don't about don't that? Don't look at me. I'll second the motion. Okay. <laughs> now, is there any discussion regarding the payment of this bill? Okay. The bill is for the surveying of the parking lot and the area behind the like printing. So. Um, we discussed this previously. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah we mm -hmm. discussed it for <laughs> several <laughs> times. Several times <laughs> for months. All right. If there's no further discussion, all in favor of paying this survey bill, thank you. All opposed, same sign, motion carries. Uh, next is the uh, easement regarding this lot behind like this printing uh, we have an easement that's been drawn up um, you want to explain the easement um, yes we had talked about this probably ad nauseum for a few months now regarding um, mr. Likens uh, agreement to let us have an easement behind his building across his property that goes behind all of those buildings on uh, the left-hand side of 231 as both an ingress and egress from the uh, the lot there next to Capers to use hopefully as parking but also to help for utilities in the undergrounds that you may be able to do access to those particular buildings for any um, deliveries or anything from the rear which has always been kind of a struggle right now that's always been a little bit locked into the other private property owners. Um, I'll note for the record that all of these discussions happened prior to his interest in the council seat as well as any uh, him even taking a role in the uh, EDC. Um, so while I would ask that he probably accuse himself on this particular vote, since it does involve him, uh, this was discussed prior to that. Um, the only issue that we had, he had no issues with it other than he did ask that when we pave the lot in the easement area, that uh, he's got about eight feet there that he parks in if they'll just go ahead and, and resurface that at the same time 
otherwise there's no consideration or anything that like that for the easement which felt like a very fair consideration point so we worked that into the details and he has been presented a copy so uh, before George can uh, execute this we just need the council to approve it anybody would like to look at it Okay, before we discuss it, we'll need a motion to accept that uh, easement to enter into that easement agreement with the Likens. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second okay. it. Okay. Now we're open for discussion. Any discussion regarding the easement? distribution Jimmy wants to make a presentation to the council when I started at the water distribution we had five, five guys you guys cut down to two and actually we're having a hard time keeping up with the water sewer and everything else George has been at a couple of our places we've been working at we've had busted lines after the new water lines put in we've had all kinds of sewer problems it's kind of hard to keep up when you only got two employees. Uh, you guys hired Anthony, that was one of the best hires that you guys have made in a long, long time. Anthony's come in and, and done wonders. Uh, Anthony's caught on everything quickly. Uh, if we find another Anthony, we'd be great. But uh, we are needing another employee just to keep everything going. Right now, we got uh, the sidewalks. We're gonna have to put the water lines on all the sidewalks downtown Hartford. And we're also about to put uh, new water lines, walkway, water meters on the opposite side that we're not going to uh, concrete. So we've got, right now, we've got so much stuff to do. We're back to. You might mention that you only have Anthony half time. We only got Anthony two days a week. That's it. They got him three down there, we got him two. And it really puts us in a bind. I got a guy right here, he can take the same thing. Uh, we're so far behind on stuff right now that there's no way to get caught up from now in, in October. Because when we start going downtown, everybody's going to be downtown. The RWs, we're going to be behind on flushing. I don't think you guys understand how much flushing we have to do in a day's period of time. I mean, we put on probably 150 to 250,000 gallons of water on the ground. Flushing. Since they put these new lines in, they circulate. We're moving water out of the big tank that we wanted. We also have more dead water in the system now we've ever had. So when we got the dead water in the system, that means we're having to flush more. We're having to put more on the ground. Why do we have more dead water in the system? Okay, because you look at 69, you've only got two people on 69 that is hooked up to our water system. And that's the USDA office, which doesn't use hardly any water. And then you've also got the uh, ambulance service. That's it. So you're telling me what we did there on 69 actually made matters worse? Yes, we've got to be water tank again. Okay. Everything else has helped out a whole lot except for that one area right there. Was that an engineering faux pas, faux pas, whatever you want to call it? Screw up. Faux pas. We'll, we'll say that's what they suggest us to do was to loop it in six. We looped it in with something a little smaller. We, we could have kept probably uh, more chlorine in, in the system. Because the bigger your line is, the longer that water is going to set. Okay, when you got to set water, the chlorine and everything else dies out a period of time. All right, so I mean, it's actually, right now, I'm sending two guys out basically to do all the flushing. I don't want to ignore your request, but I want to address one subject at a time. You're telling us that everything we've done helped our water system in the city of Hartford except going down Highway 69. And in some respects, it's made it worse. It's required more flushing, more deadhead water and we're dumping more water on the ground that we're treating to make. Is that a fair statement? Pretty fair, yes. 
but was it necessary for you to carry water over the parkway to do it that size? Over the parkway. No, they're coming. I'm talking about coming back down by more four. Yeah, he's talking about more four. Okay. Where we where we put it up at uh, uh, by your property and stuff like that. We had just now got it online. To, basically, we won't be able to put it online until probably Wednesday. If we put that online, then we can move the lines back around and get you guys on the new line. Yeah, but that still doesn't address the subject. No, no. So my question is. Oh, I thought it was different. So my question is. All the way from the USDA office all the way to 231 is uh, basically a big water tank. So my question is this. That if that was made on a recommendation of an engineer, the name made a mistake and their error of emission solver. Because we're losing money. Well, it's, 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 it's kind of a, they put it in for fire protection. And actually, we're supposed to, we're supposed to look in, uh, more forward. Was all supposed to be looped in the behind it. That would have helped to circulate all the water through more forward, and all that would have been coming off the water off the 69 project. But why didn't we do it? It wasn't a. Uh, it wasn't on the final uh, agenda. Uh, but if the there's road. any development over there next to more forward, could you tap into that? Would it? No, that's, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's what we need to tap into. You, now you got two dead end lines at more forward. You got a dead end line going right between more forward and Gipes, and then you've got on the outside of Gipes, you have a dead end line going behind Gipes. So we're going to figure out a way to tap all those in and circulate the water back around. around. And we've also got uh, a problem with the water line going down to uh, to Bob Tajie. They got schedule 160, which said is the smallest legal six inch line that, that, that you can put in the ground. They went to tap it and put a valve in, and of course it cracked. Mm -hmm. So there's in the future you guys might think about replacing that line down through there. Let me ask you a question. When were you guys at five employees at the distribution plant? Two years ago. When he started at five employees. And when did you get down to two employees? Probably about uh way two months ago. I mean it, it's it's cut all work into twice and it, it, it's hard to keep everything caught up. Uh, when Anthony came in last week, Leon wasn't real happy. I kept him four days because we was trying to get everything caught up last week that we could. Uh, we got the engineering course we had to work with, the work around, uh, and that set us behind because somebody has to kind of make sure things go in a certain certain way. But you know, cutting down two employees, you got sewer. That's, 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 that's a big thing here right now. Scrap lines and sewer lines. We find them every day when we do our camera. It takes three guys to do camera. It takes three guys to do smoke testing. Really? So while we're doing that sewer work, we have nobody do the water. So what we end up doing is making guys work over and taking time off. I know water breaks. You had the water break behind the hospital. You had the water break on Kirk Street. What happened under it? That's where they went up out when they busted the, the pipe that up out. And you talking about the mess. We yeah. lost uh, 13 foot of water in, in that period of time. There's a river down there, not Yeah. Yeah. What kind of credentials do you have to have to be work at the distribution? Right now, you don't have to have any right. You just got to have a GED right now, and then we can work you in to getting your license. That's what we do with everybody. Else. I mean, is it a water treatment license? What kind of license? Are yeah. we no, we're talking about a water distribution license. And then we're also going to work into somebody into a sewer. You know, it's not going to be long. A couple of us are going to retire, and you guys need to put somebody in good hands when we do retire. I'll say within two years, you're going to lose two or three employees. We only have two. Yes. <laughs> Which in two times, years, you got Jamie and two others. Uh, yeah. So there's three people there. Yes, we have three, but it's. We have two that's doing basically everything in the system. So let me ask you this. We went from five to two or five to three? Or are we talking about six okay. to three? At one time we had Leon. You had me, you had Mo, you had Mike, and you had uh, Aaron. So we had five. Five total. We didn't, we never did consider and the bosses. And now we're down to three. Meeting. Yes, we never did consider the bosses in the meeting. Okay, but it wasn't six and then down to right. three. It was five. Well, so you lost two people? Yes, we lost two people. Yes. Okay. 
you know what's probably confusing you is because years ago it was one. It was the water plant, water distribution was one. No, what's confusing me is he said we went from five to two, and then he said we have three, so I didn't know. Well, the know. three was basically with me going out in the system. Well, I thought the boss wasn't considered a worker. Right. You know, and that was Jim Gray. That was me, Leon, and all. Then there was five workers, and Jim Gray was the boss. We never really considered him you know, as being one of the workers out of the system. Because what he done, he made sure everything was planned in the mornings and afternoons. And, you know, I go fix water leaks and everything else. I, mean, I just wanted to make sure we were clear on how many people we have. We lost, lost actually three. Currently at this stage of the game, what is We've lost two since I've been boss. In the last 18 months, we've lost two or three. We've lost two. Okay. We Excuse lost Mike Schroeder and what's your name, Siobhan? Yeah. And Thomas. And Thomas, yeah, so we actually lost three. And, uh, and we had a part time guy that was working with us. Yeah. You had a part time person yeah. that was working with yeah, So you had like five and a half? Yes. These weren't all at the same time, though. These no. people were not all. In the last 18 months? Oh, okay. Yeah. How many people did we lose? Well, uh, let's ask a question. What is the most number of people we've had working in distribution at one time in the last six. 18 months? Six is the Instead most. Instead of count, people, you need to talk about positions. At one time? Yes. At one time. You had what? Six? We had six at one time. And was one of those people, one of those positions part time? Uh, you, yes. Yes. So you have five and a half. Five and a half. So, Jimmy, what do you feel like you need? If I get one work until October, so we can get everything downtown done, all the water usage and get everything under control downtown, I think we can do it probably with, with one part-time worker or a what they call seasonal worker. Well, let me ask you a question before we go that far. What is Anthony? Uh, Anthony, you know, is he? He's cross-training. I know, but my question is, is he cross-training? Is, is, is it? Gonna, um, is he gonna be needed more. Yes, can we can we pull him off a of training at the water plant to get us through till October? Well, my question would be if we have this, and with all the discussion we've had recently about water, and especially the fact that we're in the hole, why did we even place Anthony at the water plant in the first place rather than putting him in distribution if that's where we were short? Sure. <clears throat> yeah. To be perfectly honest. Anthony's going to make a worker that can do a lot of things. And he, to me, he's good enough, he's smart enough and good enough worker to make himself into a city manager about like uh, B-Ram has. He is smart enough and he's catching on to things that quickly. He just needs experience. He just needs experience. I mean... But to pull him off the wall, up, all up here, he does service time to get his uh, treatment plan right test. Anthony will be one of these days is going to be a city manager. Can, since he's brought up water distribution, can we go in closed sessions to have discussions on that? Since you're talking personnel matters. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Okay. Three major water breaks in the last three weeks, right? We've had three in the last three weeks. And one of them was a big one. Before I got in front of Bob back yet. So like I said, we lost. Out of the big tank, I think we lost uh, 13, about 13 feet, lost four foot out of the big tank. And that was the bowl of water or was yeah, only for down there, right? The bowl water advisory right there in that shopping center in the houses. Okay. Sure, I had a pretty good size one up on Kirk. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I knew that one was big, but apparently. <laughs> it wasn't near as big as this one, though. I mean, it just, it, it, I mean, it, it was, what, a week? Well, no, maybe not a week, but. Well, see, a good three or four days. Yeah, it was kid just, it was just like it's little weather, guys are coming out of the. Out is the, the weather plan a role in that? Because I know that Orangeboro had one, and then the county didn't they have something yeah, like that? Yeah, the one at Bob's was because of the. They was making what they was making a uh, about that. Yeah. And actually, that line is in bad shape. That's why it cracked. Let me go back to ask that question again. We got deadhead water. We're dumping water on the ground based upon a direction that we received from our engineers. Do they not have responsibility in this picture? But they they set us up for failure on this one. It should have been looked at a little harder than what they did. I so mean, why are we paying the dime on this one? We, we've got, you've got to look at it. There's going to be a problem as far as, was, was they trying to get us 
more uh, fire hydrants out, or, or was they trying to get where the water quality was higher? That's that's the question you're going to have to ask them. I think I the mean, answer to that question is eight, yes to both those questions, though. So you can't do one without you're sacrificing one in exchange for the other. Yes. Yes. And then why is that one down there on uh, two thirty one right in front of? Uh, down the ground. Yeah, I mean they, it's down the they hole. Gotta put, they got to put a two foot riser on it. But right now it's down the hole. Yeah. 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 But they finally put a two foot riser on it and raise it up to the to the proper depth. Okay. And the other one was basically the same way they put a two foot riser on it. Okay. So it's not going to stay like it? No, it won't stay like it. <laughs> no, that's why it's not been filled in yet. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay, the next item of business is the uh, recreation trail program. What we've got here is uh, uh, separate deed restrictions, what it's called. You want to explain it? It's, it's Trace the, gave us. It just. The exact same thing as we had to do when we did the walking trail out here at Wayland. When we accept these um, grant monies from DLG, we just have to agree that it's perpetually going to be used for these um, recreational trails type programs that we're not going to uh, let other people come in and just demolish it or if, even if they cut over it or they do anything, we have to repair it and keep it maintained. That's essentially all it is. Okay. Well, let me ask this question. I'm all in favor of doing this. When are we going to ever open up the one down here? I mean, it's still... The one down here? Yeah. I think I saw somebody down there unstacking the picnic tables. Who, who spoke up about my... <laughs> Well, I, I, had to get, I, had to get, I had to put pictures in to uh, grab for that project to be officially closed. Good. So we had to get pictures. Good. So now we can open it up and take care of it and use it? It's, it's a finished project. So, so do we need to do it like a ribbon, ribbon cutting, yeah. grand opening? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think somebody needs to get with the chamber. We need to make that happen. We got to read something. No, it's just uh, information only. Yeah, I just need your approval to sign it and pass it on to them. To so moved. Sign it. Second. Second. Only favor. Just formalities. All it is. Only first. Yeah. Okay. The uh, bidding for the paving projects. Um. You know, this came up at our last meeting about us using asphalt services for local instead of uh, Scotty's. And, you know, it's because of past history that Scotty's doesn't want to take small projects. You know, they don't want to put some of their after. Asphalt services look for the little small projects. That's what, what they're content with. So our auditor um, said, if we make a statement, you got the you got the statement from the auditor. No, it's just. Huh? No, I don't actually have the statement. It's it's just that that we don't have anyone that can give us a competitive bid. But it has to go into our minutes. Into our I need mean, a motion that we will try to always look for a good price, with the understanding that Scotty's will not provide a bid for us and thus we can't get two bids for paving and that has to be I me mean, because this is well, the, let me say something this is the third year in the row that the auditors have actually written us up for it and i'm like what can we do because we can't control what scotty's bids and what they don't bid i understand so is uh, asphalt services the only one who ever submits a bid yes no one else will come in give a bit and I do know even prior mayors have done the same thing they've even brought Scotty's in set them down they are not going to we're, we're not doing enough for them to be interested exactly they're not going to mobilize well. so if we have something in our minutes that we can show the auditors that we're going to do our due diligence if any other company comes in uh, if not we have it on record as such that the only other competitor refuses to come to this area you don't have a written formal statement to that effect? I mean, it's not really a... You know, I, I'm, and Donald House has done a lot of work for me personally, and he's done drum work for us at the hospital. I can tell you that I've got some complaints on some work recently, um, and I don't know 
I don't know what the reason is. That Poplar Springs has got to be looked at again. You know, but they're willing to do that. I mean, they'll do. That. They'll work with us. You know, to okay. get things right. Was it Hospital Road? Huh? Was it? The no, hospital? it was Poplar Springs. <laughs> Not Poplar Springs South, but Poplar Springs. I have no complaints. Okay. Not yet. Anyway. <clears throat> And I'd like to say he's always done good work for me, but this was a complaint that I received, so. Uh, the uh, archers will come and present this officially, but this is their only finding, and that is their recommendation. In this situation, the city council should declare in its minutes that its, un that its usual contractor is a single source. All such work should continue being negotiated to ensure that the city receives the best value possible. And all we can do, I mean, I agree, we can submit <coughs> things for bid, but well, we're not going to do the work if we only get one bid and we can afford to do the work. So. He just said if we would do something this formally and put it in our minutes that we would not have that. Their issues are anytime you take the out bids and everything, if you only get one source consistently, then it looks like you're basically you're trying to subvert the bidding process yeah. so from his standpoint he's just looking for something <coughs> can, can I make can I make a motion saying that anything that must be bid by the city of Hartford for all our work will be negotiated to make sure we receive the best possible value even if we only receive a bid from a single source okay is there a second to it all right now let's discuss any questions comments All right, hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All those in favor of this motion, uplifted hand. Thank you. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. While we're all talking about paving projects, uh, brings up the project for Memorial Gardens. Uh, is that project, do you want to go ahead and accept the bid for paving that $7,500 if so? Yeah. How are we going to pay for it? That's <laughs> the bank. <coughs> Rob the bank. <laughs> mm -hmm. We can't use our MRA money or our LGEA money because there's no coal trucks going to be on that. So, well, it's $7,500 is the bid. It's from asphalt services. They go in and they put down more rock level it putting a 10 foot wide uh, road and it's about 610 feet into that to the end. But the cemetery fund that's already there, I know it's not for this particular cemetery, but is that money already allocated to something in a trust? Uh, Oakwood, Oakwood Cemetery is all you can use it for. Okay. You know, I mean, the way I look at it is, and again, I, you know, you know how I feel it's, the occupational tax fund um, is was in consideration. I'm not saying it was earmarked specifically. It was in consideration for uh, infrastructure in this community. Obviously, cemeteries is part of our infrastructure. Right. And uh, and, it show, and I'll repeat that it needs the same respect shown as Oakwood. Long overdue. And so, what about the sinking fund? What is that? I know we've talked about this before, but I don't remember. It was originally a format uh, for your emergencies, contingencies, things like the ice storm or anything like a major pump goes down, so you have something to draw from, but it's not going to affect your budget too terribly. Okay. It has a uh, 50,000 cats. Okay. And we've had to pull out of it to make a payment to what you want. Okay. Um, so, occupational tax fund then. But I, I mean, I'm just so. We're on the same board. This is on the new fiscal year budget, this payment that you're talking about. Yes. It wasn't budgeted in last year. Okay. Right. Well, the reason I'm asking is occupational under your budget that you passed, there was only so much leeway room in there, right? About 45 is all of the left. So was this in there? No. No. So we don't have, we don't have it in the budget then do it out of occupational tax. You have 45000 left out of your budgeted 000. funds, but this is, I'm just making sure that you understand that's bringing you down to about 37, 36 mark. Which makes us sweat bullets, right? 
Right. 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 I don't care what we have to do. I want us to quit dragging our feet on this. I want this thing done. I want it done before the weather gets bad. I don't care what fun we have to pull it out of. We owe these people the respect that they haven't been given. Let's get it done. I don't care where we got to get it from. Let's just get it done. Quit dragging our feet. Right. What else did you have? To, you we asked you about the about the gates yeah, and just everything. Uh, we have, <laughs> while we're discussing the paving, I will tell you, inform you about the bids for uh, the columns and the uh, the image that's been presented to me is two columns. The road's 10 feet wide. The columns will be placed 12 feet apart. Behind the columns will be 12 foot poles, uh, four by four uh, post buried four feet in the ground. Uh, there's an archway across 10 inch letters that says Memorial Gardens. Uh, two steel gates, they're powder, powder coated. That bid is in the $6,000 range. Uh, there is another bid different kind of columns. Uh, I've got the material here to show you what the columns are they're suggesting for column material. Basically the same, just different column material, uh, post, and we would have somebody else that would have to put in the archway that says Memorial Gardens. It's about 12 feet in the air. Uh, it was 40, about 4,500 plus installation plus the archway, which is probably in the three to four hundred dollar range. So, so what was the total? Of so the, the first other bid. Okay, one total. of them is about six thousand dollars totally installed. All right. Okay. The ma material that they're suggesting that the columns made are made out of is this type of material here. It's what it sounds like, but it doesn't feel like it. No, it's, it's a hard press. I don't know. It's a composite. What they call a composite. My only concern is it wouldn't take a rock or a lawnmower much to do damage. Yeah. Well. What I think we would picture is the columns would be like 20, 21 inches square, and you would be sitting on a concrete base that would, you know, be an extra five inches or so on okay. the sides, all the way around, so that like a mower, weed eater, or anything like that would not get close to it. <laughs> It may be more proof, but it isn't terror proof. No. <laughs> More about a hailstorm. Or something. See, that was cut. That was cut probably right through. See, not my fault. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I mean, if we don't have great weather in Kentucky, and are these things going to withhold if we use this material? The guy that's putting it in says he's going to put it on his fence on his property. He's, these things were not available whenever he put his property. He's from Litchfield. And he says that... Uh, I wonder if he needs to come to one of our meetings and set my tariff. For a <laughs> 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 the other bid has this type of material for the post. Michael, that's a little more impervious. Yeah, I think so too. I don't even think Tara could break this one. I got skills. That one seems. Yeah, I think that I don't really like the looks of it so much, but it sure seems, it seems yeah. like a whole lot stouter. How much is that one? That one uh, is, uh, let's see. It's, Total cost. It's hard to say because he didn't quote the installation. The installation on that one 
is a little more expensive because you put the both of them use a four by four post in concrete. This one is put around it and there's a little concrete put in up so high to hold these. Uh, you know, we're talking about something that's already preformed and it's not just trying to make these things come together or something like that. They're already preformed as they come. That one. Is this what you're here for? Okay. No, he was. He's. He's here late to apply for the council seat. Really? <laughs> yeah. We already filled it, David. That's I'm all. sorry. That's uh, but uh, that one, I think it's supposed to be filled all the way up with concrete. So if you have a five foot. I like the durability of this one better. I do. Okay. It's just a matter of the looks and. Yeah, we're not going to let, really we're not gonna yeah, let Terry get around either one of them, but I like the durability of that one better. I mean, I did that with a finger. I mean, the rock kind of, I like those better, but I'm not going to hold up, I wouldn't think. I don't know. That might look a lot better if it was just not one little piece. Oh, I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? I, it looks okay. Uh, yeah. It's just having it up next to those that makes it look it's not, not quite so good. It's not quite as attractive, is yeah. it? Yeah. Well, this yeah, is all the seeing is the stacked stone. The stacked stone, yeah. Mm -hmm. All of these are would come as a complete cost hollow tube. I mean, these are just samples of the materials. All they are. I just feel like we're getting a better quality product with that one out there. Write that down. We'll just take a picture of it. Okay. What you want it now? Now that you broke it, maybe on the interior of my building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The interior of your wall, something mm -hmm. like that. If you had a whole wall like that. I got a whole fireplace. Well, I don't know if those would up to fire. And take a picture of the front and show mom. You had experience with kids very much. <laughs> Me? Yeah. I try to avoid them. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes you don't have a choice on it when they're good. <laughs> <laughs> when could Mr. House get to the laying paint the pavement? Um He's kind of come and gone from various projects. We've had him repairing you know, the places in the street, he'd leave it, come back, and go do a small project. So I would say probably within, I'm not sure what his schedule is, I haven't talked to him, but probably in the next two to three weeks. I make a motion we go ahead and lay the black top up there at Memorial Gardens, take the $75 and withdraw it out of the occupational tax fund. The, the paving needs to be done and everything done before this is done anyway. This gives us an opportunity to find out exact placement on this. And, uh, and then, I mean, this guy, this guy that yes. does this, and the guy that does this, I can have them both come and talk to you. No, I don't think that's. I don't think that's necessary. necessary. Okay. I just like the motion. I would like to have a final price on what it could be, get both of them installed and get everything done and get it finished. This one is going to be in the. Fifty-eight hundred to six thousand dollar range. This one was forty-five hundred plus installation plus the archway. The archway was. <laughs> I don't know what to take. I know. The, all right. The first quote I got was for seven inch letters for the archway. Okay, that was two hundred fifty dollars. Seven inch letters. They're not tall enough. Not tall enough. It needs to be about ten inches or so. 10 inch letters would probably run it up to $300, $350 for just the archway. What's the archway made out of? It's a, it's a steel. Now, the thing is, the guy that wants to put this in has got aluminum gates. He's got aluminum gates that he wants to put them in. And I don't think the aluminum gates would hold up like the steel gates would. We can do the installation here ourselves. Get this guy to make our gates and put in these columns. You can you can mix it up like that. Job tour to handy folks. Yep. Um. I think for for the um, for the harvest festival, we should do we should do fundraising for the the memorial gardens to help to fund that part of it uh, I think we should go ahead and pave it and 
we need a full price on that one because I think that that's the better material. That's my thoughts on it. Okay, this comes from a company I can totally bypass the installer. We can install it ourselves. Who's we? Jason. City. So you're saying that'll come as an actual call? <laughs> It'll just have to you go. Can order, you can no. order no. this into whatever color you want. Uh, so we would just need to know the total price of that and the total price of the the um, gift Art. archway. Um, I'm trying to think what the website is. Hoover Fence Company. Hoover Fence Company is the one that they have a seem like it's a three foot section that's a column and then they have a two foot extension. Uh oh. Just gonna get artistic on us, I thought. Alright, they have a column that's um, two columns of this that are twenty one by twenty one by four foot eight. Is seven hundred twenty-two dollars and sixty cents. Stack sections, which add another fifteen inches, which would put it up around six feet tall. I don't know if you need them that tall. Is another two hundred sixty-eight dollars and eighty-eight cents. The pyramidal caps that go on the top of it are one hundred sixty dollars and fifty cents. Total. Mm -hmm. Um, that, is that also like that's Hoover Fence? That's prettier than um, that is prettier. Mm -hmm. Which one? I just looked up Hoover Fence. Yeah. Well, that is a lot prettier. See it? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really neat. It just doesn't. I like, like that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't think it'll hold there. up. Yeah. It would be good indoors. That's this one? Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks good. Looks good. So that is that one? Yeah. That's okay. this one right here. Yeah. But I don't like the aluminum gates. I'd rather have the steel gates. Well, you know, we, we, we're going to go ahead. Well, I'll say we're going to go ahead. We've got a motion. I don't know if we've got a second or not to get the black topping done because we have to have the yeah. black topping done before we get the location of the pads. I, I like the looks of this, and then it gives us time to go ahead and get the quote on that archway, archway and get that done, and that way we can move forward and get all this done. Hopefully, have it all done before October. Yeah, that's fine. Jerry has the second. Who's second? Jerry second. Okay. That's for the paving, correct? Right. Just paving is the only thing we're talking about. So what we're talking about? Quote seventy-five hundred dollars. Any more discussion? All in favor of the quote? All opposed? Thank you. Mr. Terry. Uh, let's get let's get so we can vote on it the next if Donald can have the paving done so we can go ahead and move on this post and get that done until you get everything done, the next one. Okay. Um about two weeks. Well, I don't know. I don't know how long it's gonna take him to get these quotes. Here's and Donald, the, and Donald, here's the brochure on this stuff. <laughs> It's really neat from an exterior standpoint, though. It's just uncomfortable. I just don't think that's going to hold it. He says it'll hold it. I mean, I can definitely see it put on the interior. I don't think it looks very stout. Not as stout as that other one. I'm not trying to push one or the other. Oh, no. I just took that little weed you didn't see. Put on the wall. The wall that's falling down. Stick it on there. Yeah. Put a nice wall for the dog on there. From a stability standpoint, I don't know. Yeah, you can stack it. Like it's yeah. 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 Throw your phone there. Yeah, you can stack it. Mm -hmm. It's a solid piece. Did you draw that? Okay. I like it. No, that's one, like one of the guys that brought this stuff right here. They've got other jobs that they can pull back on. Uh, <laughs> he was just doing some rough figure, you know. Um, they crossed them. Yeah, how, how tall. In how other words, it's not a blueprint. <laughs> Anyway, that's what his, we were talking about where to place the post and stuff like that. Okay, so we can we have these posts with a steel 
gate, or do uh -huh. we have to get them all uh -huh. together? We can get, we can get whatever we want. Steel gates. Okay. We put up different columns. Okay. We can mix and match any way we want to. Okay. This one, I think, would be well served, I believe, is to go ahead and fill this up with concrete. Mm -hmm. so Based upon that picture I saw there. That come from Hoover? This is Hoover. Yeah, I like it. I like it better, too. Yep. Yeah, that's the stacks right there. What's that? The tear needs to look at some of that. Make sure about that. I mean, from an interior standpoint, I think it's awesome. Yeah, I just don't. It kind of worries me. I don't like the outside. I don't like it for outside use. I really don't. It's also porous. So what happens if you have moisture inside and it freezes us or something? I mean, that just lays over top of it. You know, that it just gets over top of that concrete block. This guy's so light, whatever it is. I mean, they're doing it in and out. you got to be kidding okay. me. We're looking for the pointies again. I think it's your annual. I mean, they'll do whatever we ask them to do, whatever we want. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Looks like Terry's yard. All right. Uh, <laughs> our last item that we've got that requires business is the regional wastewater appointees. We have two that are appointed for a four-year term. These that we've got have come on at different times to fill vacancies, so what I need is a motion that we appoint Maribel Fisher and John Ross effective January 1 of this year for a four-year term to expire January 1 of 22. They're willing to do it? Yeah. So moved. So second. second. Favor? So vote. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, w I would like to discuss that. I mean, we, we already have a lot of problems there. Do we not want to rethink? Other Change. Things? Yeah. They're the ones you most recently put on to help address that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Informational. We got uh, two things of informational. Um, one, uh, at this point, to tell you that. Okay, that when we opened the bids for the sidewalk project, the engineer estimated the cost of the sidewalk project to be $683,000. We were hoping for a bid in the $660,000 range. The low bid that we got, we only had two bids. The low bid that we got was $1,339,000, twice as much as what the engineer estimated. Don't believe we're going to be doing a sidewalk. Well, he's meeting with this with this low bidder to try to find out why his estimate. Was, Who submitted bids? Uh, KMAC Contracting of Dixon, Kentucky submitted the low bid. KMAC? KMAC. Uh, we had another bid for two million eight hundred thousand dollars for a, what we thought was going to be a six hundred eighty-three thousand dollar project. Who bid that? That was Knight's Construction from Slaughter. <coughs> so the engineer is meeting this week with trying to meet with uh, KMAC to try to find out why there's such a discrepancy. Maybe he misunderstood what the specs were. Uh, I know that both of them said this is one of the hardest projects they ever been. I don't understand it, but anyway. It's sidewalks. Do what? I said it's sidewalks. How can it be one of the hardest projects they have been? Well, one of the project problems is down at uh, Union Street and Main Street on the northwest corner over there where the consignment shop is. You've got to, they're going to put a handicap ramp in there. And so there's a lot of extra work that goes. There's a lot of buildings that they're going to have to jackhammer concrete away from buildings. Surely they've done all this before. I mean, well, we can't be like those. I can't imagine that. But whatever. Knight's Knight bid $2.8 million. Right. Which is four times what the engineers quoted it yeah. should be. Yeah. I don't they think we're going to do the prevailing wage and all that stuff. They have to do prevailing wage. That's what drives them up so much. Engineers is also the one to run the deadhead line down to 231, uh, down 69. That's part of that. So, 
to the Board of Education will be in that intersection and you look at all the concrete yeah. ADA rails. That's great. I love the look of this. I, from an exterior standpoint, I love the interior. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Are you all shopping? Jesus. <laughs> She's doing some remodeling. As long as somebody else is paying, sure. She's yeah. just already remodeling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, too, right. I want that kind of uh, Where are we on the wall? I just wondered. He's had to get that letter from you that he's now got. He's in South Carolina as we speak right now. Okay. And he's waiting on the engineer to come here and get started on it. He has, he asked the other day about that telephone pole, that telephone pole, I put a call into KU. They're not, they never even returned the, tele, the telephone call. And then he's got a, one question about what to do about that one uh, meter base sitting on the wall. So he's getting a recommendation from the engineer on that. that the wall. He'll have to trim around it. Okay. Put a collar around it or something. I don't know if they moved that. Nope. Not that one. The one right in the middle of the wall? Nope. Nope. I'm sticking right up yeah. the wall. Put her smack dab in the middle. All right. That's the information. Will anybody have anything else? Uh, tell me that we in April did not pay $52,000 for a nine tenths of an inch of rainfall? There is no correlation between the amount of rainfall and how much we paid down there. I have I have graphed this thing and the lines just they just go every which way. There's no correlation whatsoever. Nine tenths cost us fifty two thousand. Mm -hmm. Four point nine inches cost us forty four thousand. Yeah. There's no but there is no correlation. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. She has shortened this report. Uh, if you'll notice, it starts on January 2016, and uh, we've taken. It was just getting so bulky that we've taken out the first two years. We always have that available for you anytime that you want to go back and compare or do anything. But uh, we've just lopped off a couple of years at the very beginning here, 14 and 15, to make. Easier to fit on paper. It's, it's, it's no rhyme or reason to it. You can't, you can't say we got 12 inches this month, we expect a $100,000 bill. It may be $30,000. You had 90,000 in March? Water tables, I, I, God only knows what happens. It's amazing what monies we bring in on sewer and then we turn around and send it down to the regional wastewater plant mm -hmm. and how much reserves they are setting on. It's just well, horrible. We average over $700,000 a year bringing in Current sewer revenue is right at seven hundred fifty thousand. And every bit of it goes down to regional wastewater. And they want more. <laughs> they want more. Yeah. They want more than what we bring. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else have anything? Are we going to discuss this water distribution thing? We can. Yeah. We'll make a motion. I make a motion to go in closed session okay. to discuss personnel related to the water distribution. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? 